Welcome to the Sourcing Hero podcast produced by Una, a group purchasing organization that empowers sourcing heroes and Art of Procurement, the world's largest procurement podcast network. I'm your host, Kelly Barner. The goal of the Sourcing Hero podcast is to capture the epic stories of people who are rising up and beating the odds to create exceptional value within procurement directly from those heroes themselves. Today is a very special episode of the Sourcing Hero podcast. We are officially marking episode 100, which is a huge milestone in podcasting. Now, if you happen to listen to other podcasts, this statistic I'm going to share actually goes across genres. The average podcast only produces six episodes before it does what they call in the biz pod fading, which means it sort of languishes and just disappears. Now, only 10% of podcasts make it to episode 100. So this is absolutely a moment worth celebrating. And to get a little bit of help with that, I have two guests with me today. Anthony Clervy is the Chief People Officer at UNA, a very unique kind of CPO, you might say. He's an investor and a natural connector, something you definitely already know if you see his posts on LinkedIn. And Chris Lance. Chris is a Senior Director at UNA. He is dedicated to improving the client experience by listening first and then pairing strategy and tactics to achieve new levels of performance. So Anthony and Chris, hello, and thank you so much for being here to mark episode 100 of the Sourcing Hero podcast. Hey, hey, glad to be here. Hey, Kelly, how you doing? Now, we're not hearing it today, but for everybody that's listening in for real to episode 100, you also just heard our brand new music sort of like a little gift to ourselves for episode 100. Now, Anthony, you played a direct hand in picking it out. What do you think? I mean, I love it self self servingly. <laughs> so, I think anything was better than kind of our murder mystery opener. So, <laughs> the time the time had come. Making you wonder if there was like a dark side to that yeah. sourcing hero. What's what's in his backstory that we don't know about? What's going on? Well, we did, we, we did have the Mario Kart scandal, so Okay, you want to go there now. (laughs) Okay, now boys, no fighting on episode 100. Uh, But Chris, I actually want to get your thoughts about something. When we record these episodes, and you know this well, because you're with me every single month, we go directly in to record, and then our production team is the one that actually puts on the intro and the outro, which has the music on it. So we could have just rolled on with the same old creepy murder mystery clown music forever, but we didn't. We stopped and we thought about the total listener experience. How important is it, bigger picture, for all of us to pause at times and think about our clients and our partners and our customers' firsthand experience? Well, so most of us have one mouth and and two ears, right? And so I think that's a sign that most of us, myself included, really don't watch carefully enough. So having said that, I think it's beyond important to take feedback into consideration or you often run the time, take, well, run the risk, I should say, of taking action that doesn't necessarily yeah. support your clients, your members, your 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 team members' needs. So it's, it's really just another data point, actually. And I would say it's a critical one to make decisions around. But, you know... <clears throat> Now, look, there, there are some philosophies around employees first, like one of them is, you know, take care of your employees and they'll take care of your customers. But, you know, I and we are of the opinion that you should be doing both yeah. in, a, in a business or leadership position. So that being said, and to echo what Anthony was saying, I think it was time for a very fun and, and healthy change. Now, speaking of fun and for everybody listening in, Chris and Anthony agreed to do this next segment with me with absolutely no prep or idea what we're going to do. So huge kudos to these two guys for trusting me, or I don't know, maybe we should be questioning their sanity, but I wanted to do something a little bit fun and different in this episode. Oh and boy. Since- <laughs> I know. It's too late to back out now, Anthony. You are, you I'm are in. stuck. I'm all in. <laughs> okay. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to play a word association game. So I have three words picked out for each of you, and they're all different. 
I'm going to tell you what your word is, and you are just going to give me the first other word associated with it that comes to mind. And you, you're both validating here. I've not told you what these words are, right? Correct. Correct. I'm kind of yeah. now. Correct. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. <laughs> and this would be why we don't do video. <laughs> we yeah. don't want anyone seeing the fear. Okay. So, Anthony, I'm going to start with you, and we're going to go back and forth. So, Anthony, okay. your first word is team. Una. Chris, your first word is strong. Me. Wow. I was going to say, <laughs> I was, I was going to say Chris. <laughs> Anthony, opportunity. Opportunity. 2023. Chris, partner. In crime. Anthony, <laughs> connection. A true friend. And Chris, last but not least, listen. Then speak. Well done, guys. You officially survived the first round of Sourcing Hero Word Association. <laughs> wow. Now, what we should do is spin this on you, and you you got to do three, but I'm not going to do that. Wait, what's that? What's that? The signal's breaking up. So sorry. We're, oh, we're yeah. So have sorry. We have to record this. <laughs> yeah. I do want to, I'm going to, I'm going to go us off track here, a little off, off beat. I just want to promote just the auto, pro, auto procurement and Kelly, you as our host, like it's been a fantastic year of 2022. Like we wouldn't have been able to get to hundred episodes without you. I think what you and Chris do monthly is fantastic. And it's just, you know, goes without saying again, what, what you guys have done, what you're doing, Kelly. And we're just, you know, when I think of partner, I, I just want to chime in. I think that was Chris's word. I think of auto procurement how you guys serve the procurement and the CPO community. Uh, and I think in a really unique and fun way. So we're glad to be partners with you guys. Well, and I, I wholeheartedly appreciate that. You know, it's funny. I, I just pre-interviewed somebody this morning and sort of prepping them for the, the recording conversation that we'll have at a later date. And one of the things that I often tell people, especially when they don't do podcasts a lot or even virtual speaking, is I try to help them understand that in part, we make this process as easy as we can because we want to be professional, right? We're hard workers and all that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it really does come down to that listening experience. The more fun everybody's able to have, the better the recording is, and then the better it is to listen to the whole podcast. And truthfully, I on The Sourcing Hero and Phil on the regular Art of Procurement podcast, we have sure. every bit as much fun as every guest does. Um, and so I'm glad that that comes through in the sound that we're able to share with everyone. Amen. Well said. Mm -hmm. Now, Anthony, this episode will actually air on February 1st, and it's the 24th today. So we're not looking crazy far into the future. I'd be interested to hear from you, and, and without knowing it, you may have actually teased this a little bit in the word association game, but what would you say your general outlook for 2023 is? Hmm. Well, see, I'm an entrepreneur, so I was kind of cut with this glass half full mindset. And it's the only way you can survive and ultimately thrive. Um, so as it relates specifically to UNA, I'm bullish. You know, the right organizations need, you know, what we have to offer. And, and right now, businesses and enterprises are focused on cutting costs. Where can they find savings by reducing their SGNA, general admin expenses, et cetera? And as it relates to the economy as a whole, uh, you know, I have some mixed feelings. Yeah. Um, you know, none of us have a crystal ball, crystal ball, but I like that we have a divided government right now. Inflation seems to be trending down. We will see, you know, that report. So like, this will come out in six days. So the new new inflation report comes out February 14th. Hopefully that's optimistic. But we still have a long way to go. There's still a war going on. I mean, I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> Whether people realize it or not, um, I believe the Fed needs to continue to be hawkish and do another 50 basis points. That'll come up probably the day this comes out. Um, demand seems to be cooling, unemployment. I mean, these are things that are just going on. So I'm hopeful for some semblance of normalcy or predictability. Yeah. But I think we're looking over the next 12 to 24 months, whatever that looks like. Now, Chris, just to bring in your take here, and, and in this case, certainly anything that Anthony shared that you want to 
add to, disagree with. You're certainly welcome to do that. But I'd also be interested to hear what you're maybe hearing in conversations with Una's partners on both the procurement or buy side as, as well as the supplier side. What are your thoughts around what we're likely to encounter this year? Yeah, so I think Anthony nailed it, and he may not have even know, known he was nailing what I was about to say, but I think just about everything is really going to come down to your mindset um, going into 2023. That's my opinion, because I think that with chaos, or even maybe a less aggressive word, with disruption comes opportunity. And so I think seizing those opportunities and whatever that means for businesses, small or large, or personal, individual decisions, I think it... 2023 is going to be a very interesting ride. Now, what I'm hearing from others in kind of the industry is uh, it's not as rosy of an outlook, right? And then hence needing that mindset to forge ahead or out earn the problem or uh, just different things like that. But I I do think shortages are going to continue, um, I think, especially in food. And, you know, for some of those, they may say, well, I haven't seen shortages. I listened to you back in August. <laughs> I would argue have you have you seen the price increases? Because yeah. that's what that's playing a large role, and that's actually the beginning of what shortages look like. You know, quick example: eggs uh, right now and, the, and their cost. But I think ultimately it's going to hit every industry. Um, while we are seeing inflation cool off, uh, well, I'm not going to argue whether we're already in a recession or not. You know, when I was yeah. in school and it was discussed, well, <laughs> uh, all the boxes have been checked. But I I digress. I think that while things seem to be improving, um, I think for me, it's kind of the calm before the storm too. I think that raw materials are going to get much more complicated to come by or they're going to be at a premium. And I think utilities are going to continue to rise as well with some of the bills that were passed last year. I think a lot of people don't recognize that there were some provisions and things in there that actually didn't come into effect until this year. Um, and then sadly, just the reality of what we're already seeing, what, 20 something days into the month, into the year, continued layoffs. I mean, whether it was Amazon, Robinhood, Tesla, Spotify, you know, the list is a pretty long list. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see some of those um, as companies look to um, correct the health of their organization or to, to just hit numbers. And then also, if you wanted to hear, you know, a, a little back and forth, maybe this will be another episode. Chat GB, GPT, um, <laughs> I think whether that's in the short term or definitely in the long term, I think that um, that is going to have uh, long term effects and not, you know, in, in white collar positions essentially is where I'm going with this. Um, the information that you're able to get out of different tools like this and others is just tremendous. And so when you start looking at automation and AI and you combine it with Chat GPT, I I don't know, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting year. And back to Anthony and what he was saying before is you got to have a very strong and a positive outlook uh, to, to forge ahead this year. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's interesting because, again, as we as we talk, it was only a couple of days ago that Alphabet, Google's parent company, announced mm-hmm. huge rounds of layoffs. And I think mm-hmm. certainly that impacts each one of those individuals and their family in a huge way. But we do seem to be going through enough successive rounds of this kind of thing that I think it's starting to work its way into the collective mindset. Mm -hmm. I think for the first time, I was hyper aware of how many people who had just lost positions at Google were posting about it on LinkedIn. Yeah, I felt like going through my LinkedIn feed. Did you notice that, Anthony? Because you're super busy on on LinkedIn. Did you also notice what I'm saying? I noticed that with Google, Amazon. I mean- you could really start to play mind games. So Google turns around, does the layoff, the riff, and then they put ten billion into OpenAI. But again, that's another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm keeping track. We're like racking off additional episodes here. Um, Chris, to stay with you for for just a second. You know, we think about sort of the the positive mindset on things versus, you know, I won't go as far as saying negative, but um, procurement often struggles with our internal brand. Um, and I was I was brainstorming, this is maybe this is my word association game. I was trying to think of all of the not so flattering nicknames for procurement that I've heard over the years. Uh, bean counters, penny pinchers, and of course my classic favorite, pencil sharpeners, so creative. Um, how does the way that other people see and therefore treat procurement 
actually cause sort of a negative internal cycle of thought that that holds us back. So Chris, let me start with you on that. And then Anthony, I'll come to you for your thoughts on the same question. Yeah. Well, so that, that mindset or that perspective, it, it doesn't allow procurement to excel. Uh, I think in fact, it, it puts them in a position to sometimes barely be able to execute. So what, and what's interesting too, is when I, when we, you know, when I have maybe conversations around this topic, you know, there's a lot of companies where they'll say, well, we don't do that. And then my very next question is, oh, okay. So does procurement have signing authority? Do they have the ability to make changes? Because if your answers are no, then I would argue you're you're really only asking them to do the tedious work or to participate in the fire drills or, hey, where is this rogue spend and why has it gotten out of hand? Or there's a large project that fell from the sky and now it's important. Um, I, it really puts procurement in a really tough spot to excel. It's, it's almost like, well, what are the expectations, right? And deeper internal conversations. Now, I'll say playing devil's advocate on this. I think some of the practitioners in this space may have kind of created their own monster. Uh, and what I mean by that is be, being risk averse is one thing. And I, I would, you know, in some items, I would even put myself in that category. But to be decisively indecisive, well, that ends up with no action being taken. Or, you know, when you do find savings or you have improved a process, well, that actually ends up being negated by all the inefficiencies or the, the time that had been wasted. So I think to change that, you know, a lot of times I, I say things, I'm like, so how do you fix it? Right. So I would say to change this, there needs to be, again, maybe the theme is mindset today, but mm. there needs to be a mindset shift at the top uh, and for, for speed of those changes to actually impact um, the overall company. So Anthony, then from an investor's standpoint, you know, you talked about your optimistic mindset if you were sitting in one of those big cushy chairs on Shark Tank and any procurement team in the world came and stood before you and said, you know, here's our value proposition, here's our challenges, we need your help. As an investor who understands what it takes to build a successful business, but also what each of those teams needs to be doing internally to sort of strengthen that overall value proposition, what advice would you give procurement about their mindset and approach? Good question. So I think about collaboration. I do think I think about mindset. I will tell you numbers don't lie. So I think procurement can play a wonderful role in evaluating numbers, evaluating contracts, evaluating relationships, uh, where things are in the supply chain, current incumbent suppliers or partners, new partners, all of that. If there's something heavy from a direct or indirect side, I think procurement could play a fantastic role there. They should, and they should be top of mind and they should be welcome to the conversation, not after uh, uh, an accident or a fire drill, but, which is an interesting conversation. We see a lot of that, a very reactive approach to the market. We're seeing much more proactive now, mm -hmm. I think because of the pressures of the market. Um, but I would advise and, and align with Chris, it is a top-down mindset investing in a business or I think of acquisition, mm -hmm. you know, you talk about uh, SGNA or the, the, the number the other phrase that's thrown around is EBITDA. I think they're what we try to talk about from, from an owner perspective is, yeah, there's a, there's this whole emphasis on cost savings and, um, and it's critical, but what, what are the reaction? How does that play out through the organization? Is there, is there an opportunity to hire more talented people or keep the talent that you have. Yeah. Um, so then there, so cash flow now, now all of a sudden within the business, most even in tech, cash flows now we're <laughs> asset values are going down, interest rates are going up. Everybody wants to look at cash flow. Um, you've seen Facebook get all this pressure, you know, not so much investment in the pipe dream of the metaverse, but hey, let's, let's, let's focus on cash flow. Well, that's not unique to pro, uh, publicly held companies. So I guess I would come back with, so I'm a huge fan of, so Brad Beach, he's the senior director of IT sourcing for Walmart. Shout out. Um, I think we're at some point, we're going to have him as a guest. I know he's, yeah. he's deep in it right now, but he would say the sooner you get procurement involved in the process, the better the price will be. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's not all about price, but the, it's a, it's a really interesting phrase because there's a lot that goes into it and all the heroes in procurement 
and practitioners know that. And the trick is, is I think as Phil would say, and, and some of the other authors that we, we all um, like and appreciate, how do you cross over that chasm? And so I, I and be more, and, and, and invite C-suite in um, or others that don't know the procurement language or don't know all the acronyms. And I'll end with this is I kind of go back to mindset. And as soon as you say, we can't do that, or we don't do that, your brain shuts down. And I often say, but the mind's like a parachute. It only works if it's open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. One of the ironic things about the Sourcing Hero podcast is that we almost never talk about GPOs. And, and I actually think that's a, a credit to you guys. I think there's a lot of heavy-handed marketing that goes on in the procurement space that sort of plays in an area where procurement already has a little bit of trouble with trust. Uh, but in this one case, I actually think there's a pretty significant similarity between the challenge that procurement faces internally, which is, you know, we're perceived as being one thing, right? We're a hammer. So everywhere you look, everything looks like a nail, like savings, savings, savings. We use the same process to get it. But we can do so much more. I'd be interested, Anthony, in your thoughts. Do you think that GPOs as a way of managing suppliers and, and spend and generating value face a similar challenge? Do even procurement, do we have a perspective on what GPOs offer and where they fit into our over toolkit that limits our ability to actually work with them in the best way possible? Hmm. Maybe, uh, but arrogantly, not Una. You know, our brand <laughs> positioning is unique. And when we, when we meet you or you step into our little universe, as we like to call it, you know, after a few minutes, you'll realize we're not like other GPOs. I mean, you said it. We don't promote ourselves, but I'm just going to take, you know, you throw me a softball. I'm going to do it. Um, you know, we understand where we belong within procurement teams and where we don't. And we understand what we're good at and what we're not. And we'll tell you. And I love it when prospective members assume they know how UNA works or what we do or better yet, why we even do it. So we pride ourselves on leading with education and value and solving our members' problems. I mean, you said it, Kelly. Heck, that's why we do this podcast. Yeah. We want to raise up as many procurement and sourcing heroes as we can. Procurement is not only cool, it's necessary. And I'll actually add to that, true to my roots here, I would say procurement is wicked cool. Usually Wicked. I'm pretty good at managing my Boston accent, especially for podcast recording. But I feel like in this circumstance, it, it needs to come out. Procurement is absolutely a critical part of the enterprise. Um, and, you know, as we start to sort of wrap down this 100th episode celebration, which is so huge, normally at this point, I would ask both of you to pick between the two questions, Right. What's a sourcing hero? What does heroism look like? But you've both answered those questions in other episodes. So we had talked about doing something a little bit different here. And I actually think it's part of the mission of this podcast. I think it's part of the way that both of you and the rest of your team, who are also amazing, uh, operate. I want to talk about connections you know, that was part of where we went with some of the word association things. We talked about team, we talked about partner, we talked about opportunity and literally connection. Um, so Chris, starting with you, mm -hmm. how do you know when you've made a meaningful connection? What does that feel like? <clears throat> well, so I don't think you know right away. Um, I think not always, I should say, but for me, like when I look at meaningful connections or, and maybe I'm kind of coupling this with meaningful relationships, but for me, it's oftentimes when, when the initial point of connection or conversation is over, does the dialogue continue? So it's kind of like good literature almost in the sense where it, it can withstand the test of time, albeit not always. Um, but that's for me, that's how I would classify a meaningful connection is does it supersede what the initial conversation was about? Um, and does it continue on forward? Does it evolve? Does it grow? Um, yeah, that's that's how I would define a, a, a meaningful connection. I think you're right. And it's interesting that you point out you don't often know right away. Mm. Right. For instance, there was this guy whose boss told him 
he absolutely had to start doing regular podcast recordings. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. He, he wasn't particularly thrilled about the idea, but we did that first one. And you know what? The dialogue continued. And yeah. we did a second one and a third one. And now- And look at him now. I know. <laughs> look, at he's he's got his radio voice on. He's oh, all ready, man. right? Yep. So we didn't know, right? We started going down that road, but you go into every situation with the mm-hmm. benefit of the doubt, like it's going to be a yeah. connection. And you at least haven't closed yourself off to the opportunity if one should be able to materialize. Yeah, without question. And in that same vein, right? I mean, I echo what you're saying. I definitely would consider you and Phil and and others at AOP that, yeah, perfect example of a, a meaningful connection for sure. All right, Anthony. So the last word in this conversation is going to go to you. And you can come at this from a social media standpoint, personally, as an investor, Um, When you think about making meaningful connections, how do you know when that's happened? I'll tell you what I don't like is when someone slides into your DM after they connect (laughs) with you on LinkedIn and just like a right hook sell you something. So in case that's not abundantly obvious to our audience or the audience abroad, uh, that'd be something I wouldn't recommend. But thinking about this question, as Chris answered, I thought eloquently, um, it's obvious, but it's true. And it's, I mean, you know, I have little to no patience. I would call that a sense of urgency. My wife would call that impatience. But that, <laughs> that's another podcast episode. Um, good relationships are built on trust and they take time. You know, the last couple, I'd say the last month, I've been very active on LinkedIn. It's kind of going to be my new, my new mantra to engage more with our practitioners, engage more with this budding audience and try to understand more about what's going on. And I, I kept thinking, gosh, it seems like our practitioners are kind of worn out after the last couple of years. Mm. Seems like maybe there isn't enough empathy in the market for anybody who's trying to reach, connect, or when it makes sense, sell uh, to procurement and C-suite. And I think of meaningful connections. I have to go back to it. And I've used it before when, you know, when you find something that works, you stick to it. Maya Angelou has a quote, um, you know, nobody really remembers what you said to them. And I'm paraphrasing, but they walk away and they're going to remember how you, they they certainly remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And so there is something emotional about that positive or negative. And there is something that resonates of some kind of kindred spirit. Maybe it's a place you visited. Maybe it's something to do with family. Um, That's been fun too. Just connecting on LinkedIn, just sharing some family stuff, how it relates to business, because I refuse to believe that you can just compartmentalize your life. Um, These are real people. And so there's just a human element to the brand. There's a human element that we, you know, just how do you connect with a human? How do you like to be treated? How, what, what stands out to you when you can see somebody going that extra mile, or maybe they've just done a little bit of research on who you are and what you're about. And that's the, that's the opener to the conversation that tends to start things off on the right track. And, I find, um, you know, things really keep going there and and good relationships are infinite. They're ever flowing. It's not static. It's dynamic. Well, this has been an absolute blast. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm going to suggest that the three of us do another one of these before episode 200, which will be here in a a breath time. Um, Since we know we don't want people sliding into your DMs with promotional stuff, Anthony. (laughs) None of us do. It's not unique to me. (laughs) If people listen to this and do want to reach out and connect with you, what is the best way for them to do that? Yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn. Literally just type in Anthony Clervy. I'll spell my last name, C-L-E-R-V-I. I'm the only one out of 8 billion people. You, you know what? Your last name could be Smith, Anthony, and you would still be the only one out of 8 million people. Yeah, that is <laughs> so, an absolute compliment. I'm going to take it that way. <laughs> please do. Please do. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't. Um, and, and Chris, who will be back with me in a few episodes for our monthly get together and review of things that are not on the do not say list. What is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Uh, so I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm not nearly as uh, as vocal on LinkedIn, but I am out there. So that's Chris with a K, K-R-I-S, Lance um, on LinkedIn. Also, if you go to our website and you kind of go to About Us, you should see 
if you just click on my face, it should it should point you towards me too. You can send me an email. That's also Chris K R I S at Una.com. So. If I could jump in too, Kelly, I just I'm a huge fan of our marketing team, what we've done. So Una.com floor, forward slash resources. Ooh, yeah. We have a library of all of our incredible resources, everything from our latest blog posts, guides, playbooks, and our previous 99 podcast episodes. Which reminds me, we have one other person that we need to thank. Thank you to every single person that listened in, shared an episode, engaged on social, sat down with me for a pre-interview and interview. This is truly a community effort. Uh, Sourcing heroes should be plural all the time, sourcing heroes. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Chris and Anthony. Thank you to the UNA marketing team, the Art of Procurement production team, everyone behind the scenes that makes all of this possible every single week. And guys, we will see you both again soon. Sounds good. See you both. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sourcing Hero Podcast. Join us again next time for more true stories of sourcing and business heroism performed by your colleagues and peers. Look for the Sourcing Hero wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to subscribe. Finally, don't forget, sourcing heroism is taking place all around us every day. Keep your eyes open and you're bound to see it. Until next time, I'm your host, Kelly Barner. Stay well and always remember that you can be a hero too.